Hi, Dong. So in this video, we're going to talk about synchrony in swordsmanship. So this is going to be a little bit different from what Musashi calls uh, rhythm timing. Uh, this is just mostly about synchronizing all the parts of your body um, as you do a cut. But don't worry, we'll talk about rhythm timing in a future video when we actually have uh, students with which to practice. Just as any student will probably know, when your instructor tells you to clean up your form, you might be like, all right, what? What does that mean? Like, am, am I doing a weird cut? Am I doing like a weird open hand thing if I'm doing open hand? What does that mean? Um, so in general, um, that's just going to be kind of like a blanket term for like, all right, your synchrony is a little bit off. But even then, it's like, all right, synchrony is a very vague word, right? So like, what, what do I need to synchronize? So as always, let's take a look at a couple of examples. Yeah. So all three of those felt weird, right? So it was probably weird looking at them. It's like, all right, like, I, I see something, right? So like something is off about them, but just saying, oh, the synchrony is off is kind of like, all right, but what about it, right? So like, how, how can I fix that? All right, so the concept that I'm going to introduce is something that was introduced to me from a Japanese background, but although the name is going to be in Japanese, the concept is very much universal. Uh, to the point that's not just swordsmanship, although this term applies st uh, specifically to swordsmanship, um, but it's going to be also very true for open hand as well. Uh, so the term is going to be kiken tai ichi. Um, and I really like that because it's going to be, again, very specific things to sync up, and everything else kind of just like falls away. Um, so ki, so if you want to think about, again, this is not going to be a, a good translation, um, but ki, like chi, is like breathing, right? So breathing, ken, like kendo, Sword, Tai, this is not obviously the, the translation, but like Taekwondo is in a body. So body and Ichi, one, right? So the breathing, the sword, and the body all in one motion. Um, and I mentioned that it's going to be also true for open hand. Um, so that's actually a little bit easier to see. Uh, so for example, uh, so again, breathing, body. Um, so for them, breathing, upper and lower body for uh, open hand, for example. So if I'm here, for example, and if I have the breathing off, off, right? If I have the lower body off, versus I have the upper body off, or the lower body off, all weird. Versus if everything is synced up, right? Much more powerful, right? Uh, so it's going to be the same thing with swordsmanship. So you want to uh, synchronize the, uh, the breathing, the swordsmanship, as well as the stances. So again, let's take a look at those previous examples before and kind of see what was wrong with them. So to over-exaggerate what I was doing before, um, so let's have that breathing be off. Right? That's going to be very um, different. Now that said, there are some more um, theatrical martial arts. So for example, if you go to um, like circuits and stuff like that when you're doing open hand forms, that's very much a stylistic choice, right? So it's not wrong, it's a stylistic choice for them to have to have more emphasis on the ki. Um, but that said, when we're fighting, we want that to be synchronized with our cut. Um, now that said, um, when I say breathing, that doesn't necessarily have to be a ki or kia, right? So it doesn't have to be yeah, right? It can just be a low hoof if you need to, right? Um, and in fact, and this is gonna be, I guess it will be a whole video in itself, uh, but for example, if you read the Book of Five Rings, uh, Musashi actually talks about the three different times for breathing, right? And the different, three different kinds of breathing or ki um, during combat, right? So at the very beginning, we have the nice little ki, right? So kind of like let everyone know you're there, a little bit of intimidation, but when you're actually in the middle of a fight, you don't want that really loud ki, right? You just want something to help sink and a nice low woof. It's actually really good for doing that, right? So for example, if you look at the beginning of, um, for example, form one, uh, so someone's coming in, I don't want them coming in with a sword drawn, trying to cleave my head in twain. They're like, ah! That's enough to push them back and then getting in the middle of it. Um, likewise, at the very end of that form, you just finished off, you just cleaved into someone, you're going to put, you're going to pull the blade out of the body, and put it away. 
right? So again, at the beginning of end, an end, um, that's mostly about either claiming your territory, if you want to think of it that way. They're like, all right, like, back off, like, this is my fight. Um, versus at the very end, it's like, all right, enemies down, right? Um, and you're kind of like letting yourself, you know, relax after that. But in the middle of a ki or middle of combat, a nice little woof is actually going to be a lot more useful. But that's a side tangent, as I am, you know, you know liable to do. Let's take a look at an example where the swordsmanship is actually a little bit off, right? So if we're here, if I have a nice loud, yeah, nice, loud, uh, nice good stance, yeah, there is no power in that cut, right? Um, and like, uh, likewise, if we take a look at a, an example where we do the, uh, the footwork a little bit off, and of the three of them, so the breathing is usually the most, uh, usually the one that's off, uh, this is the next most common. Uh, so if we have you know, the sword and the breathing all right, but we kind of have a little bit slow lag with the foot. Yeah! Again, still kind of bad, right? Um, so, again, what I really like about specifically using the term uh, Kikin Taiichi is that it gives you three specific things to focus on, right? So as opposed to like, your synchrony is off, clean it up. It's going to be like, all right, either your, you know, your body, your breathing, or your you know, footwork is off, it's a lot easier for you to kind of figure that out if you're only working on three things, as opposed to like, all right, is it this foot? Is it that foot? Is it this hand? Is it this hip? What's going on? Just three things, it's a lot easier to focus on. So at this point, it might be kind of like a moot point, um, but why do we care about synchrony in a form or in a fight, right? Um, so as you can probably guess, um, if you're more synchronized, first of all, it's more efficient on your part, uh, just because you're still trying to cut a sword into someone, um, it's just easier if you're synchronizing everything because it's all one use as opposed to like dragging out here and there. Um, it also just generally makes it more powerful, right? Because your whole body is trying to clench at one moment, right? So remember, you're actually making that clenching at impact, right? That's the most important time, um, as opposed to if you kind of like squeeze at the bottom, just at the bottom. You're already halfway, you're already done with your cut. Um, so when you're synchronizing, you'll have that nice clenching, right, going into the body, and then follow through. So here are some drills for you to do. So obviously you can do what I did, and you can do like, all right, let me actively try and not have my breathing sync up, see what happens. Actively have my, you know, my swordsmanship not sync up, see what happens. My body, see what happens. Um, that's gonna tell you a lot, and then once you really try to focus on those three things, um, ideally, it's going to clean everything up as well. So another thing I would like for you to try is to actually look at other people go through forms. Now this can also be open hand, right? So like, I'm, I'm talking about it from a swordsmanship perspective, but if you look at like open hand forms, right? So if you look at like circuits, for example, um, where people are you know, actively competing from judges and stuff like that, you can kind of see in general, they're going to have synchrony, especially if they're, you know, if they're um, getting all the points and all that kind of stuff. Um, Another side note on this is actually, uh, people naturally figure this out, although they may not have terms for it. Um, so, like, so for example, um, I did not know about specifically Kikin Taiichi until seven years ago or something like that. Um, so before that time, I think I still had a way to kind of like think about you know how to synchronize, uh, but having this very specific way um, made it easier for me to think about. Um, so again, that said. Um, people who train a long time naturally do this, and you can, you can tell that, right? So if you look at, for example, uh, your instructor, or um, your instructor's instructor, or like someone who's really well-renowned um, and, and deserves the renown, um, you can tell that they're actually synchronizing really, really well. Um, as opposed to if you look at, you know, white belts or maybe even some of your peers sometimes, it's like, all right, like, you're getting there, but like, if you introduce this idea, it might make it even more, um, again, more less ethereal to think about and more grounded. It's like, all right, these three things, focus on that. So anyway, so the long, long short of that was, um, so you know, look on YouTube, look at your peers, look at your students, look at your instructor, just watch them go through forms. Um, you don't necessarily need to, unless if you're in an instructing position, uh, don't like go around correcting people, uh, right? But like watch them, it's like, all right, like, like your cut is really good, it would be better if you had that, you know, that back foot come in at the same time and stuff like that. And as an added bonus, just because I kind of did a minor uh, rant about it, 
um, is the three types of kiai, right? So as you go through your form, again, it could be something as simple as form one. It could actually be the beginning of a sparring match, although that might be a little bit weird. I'm um, having a nice like kiai, and then do like internal, like in the middle of it, like nice little hoofs as you go through the actual combat. Maybe not kiai when you're done, because that might be a little bit weird. Um, but think about how that changes the dynamics of your form, right? Um, so again, the first one is the nice loud kiai, like, all right, everyone back off, I'm ready to fight. In the middle, right, just a nice loud hoof, bah, bah, bah. And at the very end, the nice loud kiai, let everyone know you were victorious, um, and you will fight another day. So with that, keep training, and keep practicing. Aidong!